I was thinking like Caribbean queen. She's the crown queen. And she said that's her own thing. <laughs> A darn good cup of coffee. It's so delicious. Mm. Oh, hey guys. Uh, <laughs> hey, Melrose Maniacs out there. Uh, <laughs> welcome to the next episode of Melrose Madness, <sighs> where I am have the great fortune of uh, sitting here next to Lisa. Thank you. And I have the ultimate <laughs> delight of sitting next to Wayne here. We're going to do a niceness contest just off the bat. Oh, oh. watch out, buddy. <laughs> I know. I, I will. You know what I'll do? You'll play dirty. <laughs> I'll let you win. Nice. Exactly. <laughs> uh, so here we are um, doing our usual deep dive into Melrose Place, uh, and we are now on uh, Season 1, Episode 6, Second Chance. Wow, that is Episode 6. Um, any overall impressions, anything you want to get into right off the bat? Well, you know, you guys, we all kind of talked about this, uh, and it really, I, I feel like we're all on the same page, that it felt like a very much a final gasp of that very first tone mm -hmm. that we got in the pilot of the, the very, like, yeah. uh, it felt like an issues episode. Yeah. A, a bit. Well, it, it was just, it was wholesome. Yes, it, very In a wholesome. way that, like... You know, Amanda era Melrose oh Place can't be. There, yeah. there are a few things that are just sort of like matter it's anti, so like they can't. It's so wholesome coexist. that we can't tell how potentially sexual it got. It was so. <laughs> yes, it was just yes. so. It's almost yes, as if like I almost a, felt as if it was like we were watching Pride and Prejudice, where yeah. like you're like, oh my gosh, they finally had that that sun that 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 dusk little kiss. And then, and then it's like, do they have yeah, sex? Do yeah, they not? Yeah. Why am I... Why, this is a soap opera where the love scenes get so crazy. People really Weird. look like they're going to get physically hurt. So yeah. to see something so... just so Yeah, crazy. yeah, yeah. And because it, it was even like... I mean, I, I paid attention to the smooch and it was... We're talking about Jake and Alice, of course. Yes. Uh, uh, just there was... It wasn't, they didn't go in and make out. They did like a... Yes, it was quite... <laughs> kind of like, yeah, I don't know. I'm a kiss connoisseur he over is. here. Is. I like the... <laughs> it was a That's gentle little... That's what was happening. It was... It was and it, I mean, it was, I guess it was about right for the story, which means it was wrong for what Melrose Place will become in the era where it's a phenomenon. You're absolutely right. It is, it is the absolute raciest it gets at this point. The things that are suggested are way, way crazier than what I, actually Yeah, <laughs> there's some big suggestions. Yeah, we actually, we, we thought, producer, producer Alan and I thought about it as like, you're not even going to see this kind of story again where you have, you've got <laughs> like Rhonda, a woman grapples with past regret and comes out of it deciding that she actually likes her life. <laughs> You're so right. It's right. Can you imagine Jake, uh, 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 a man who's had a rough time and has found hope now for the first and, and has decided to better himself. He feels a sense of accomplishment where, where, of having where, done where something. Where does this fit in? To the Melrose Cannon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> you, you really... You're right. We're getting way too many happy endings instead of um, more of like... I feel like what ends up happening is instead of like a happy ending, we get like a reset of somebody's back to their sort of whatever their yeah. state was it, of villainousness. Um, well, and just the, we're we're seeing the stories with resolutions where lessons are learned. Yes, you're absolutely and right. And I don't think that that's what Melrose Place ends up about. I don't think it's just more no like 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 who's who what with no cliffhanger no, no, no cliff with this. We've just wrapped it up and like yeah, you're right. people understand each other a little better now versus like it's the the, the show would be will become formatted around who's up in some scheme battle. I am just thinking about some of the craziest endings to episodes that they end up, I mean they end up being like there was one this will not spoil it I'll be vague enough to yeah, just this, this pique is, some interest I promise the way we do this is spoiler free if you're new to the podcast at a certain point I want to say season five maybe six I really thought 
did a supernatural element yes. enter the show? Uh, that is how how enticing they left that episode because I really thought to myself, we are now entering uncharted territory. But that is just a testament to how how different this episode is from where they do end up going. I, that's that's a great great kind of contrast you lay down there. I, I, it's like I want to go deeper in, but I don't think that I, I, don't, I think that would take us farther afield. Um, hey, oh, listen, I love I I'm always very curious as to what the cards will bring. You're down you're down for a tangy tangent. I told um, you. So well, so we we just talk a little bit about uh, the, the the Rhonda and Matt a story here oh, where yes. R- Rhonda really finally at the center of things. Uh, we kick it off with. Um, Modern dance tickets being proffered as the uh, as as the stake in a, po- in, a in a friendly poker game. They, yeah, and Jake was like very adamant about not wanting those tickets. He was like, "How dare you? How dare you?" It really goes against ev- everything Jake enjoys. I can't. He doesn't. He doesn't like stuff. It, it might make him angry. <laughs> he would completely leave <laughs> punching his way out. <laughs> you think you're better than me? But but punch, like punch, but punch. like no. <laughs> I bet you got your GED. <laughs> yeah, it really. Uh, this makes me feel stupid, and that makes me feel angry. Um, <laughs> But keep in mind, no one wants those tickets. Allison wins them, and oh, it's like, funny. here they are back. This is trash. Don't bring it near me. Can I tell you something? <laughs> For all the times that, you know, eventually people rope other people into doing, going to their stupid events throughout the course of this show, nobody ever goes to Rhonda's stuff. No one ever wants to she, go to her classes. She, she called in a chip with Matt, in fact. Yes. It, he was like, uh, uh, no thanks. And she was like, actually, it would be, a, if you're my friend, like, I need a friend. And he was, and to his, you know, credit. He did eventually go, but also she, because remember, I think it was not, maybe it was last episode or not that many episodes. As an apology, she went to his thing, and she brought the rest of the neighbors. So you know, it is it is it people really do not want to go do Rhonda's activities. <laughs> no, no, she's she's out on the margin. Well, and and and, and this is something else. Um, you you you're, you're, I'm sure conversing with the Big Lebowski. Yes, I am. And so Alana and I, were, uh, producer Alana and I, were talking about the 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 dance quintet of it all. But like, <laughs> here we are in L.A. where when you are, this was another like Melrose plays getting it right. Mm-hmm. When you're in your twenties, oh gosh, and you've got friends who are creative, you, you get roped in a oh, bit, yes. and maybe even later. I mean, I think some of my stand up might have been the roping people in that we're talking about right now. Hey, I tricked you into doing this. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. Hey, what's up? Um, yeah, so uh, you know that it's that it's essentially. I mean, it's 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 by proxy. Rhonda's not on stage, but she's like, I've got to go th- go to this. Yes. Will you come along? And like that, we've been to you know our friends one act or like or like seeing a longer thing longer thing that our friend only has a small piece of. You know, I mean, like th- that let's whole... just say what we all are a one man or one woman show. <laughs> We love a lot of people. (laughs) And, you know, you bring up an amazing point because she, we hear about Sandy's acting all the time. We don't see it except for, like, you you very rightfully pointed out when she steps out onto the balcony and treats it like she's in a Tennessee Williams play in her little kimono. But other than that, you never really actually, we don't see her in a play or anything, but we constantly see Rhonda dancing. And then we actually saw her on a stage. And, like, I, I feel like, you know, even if you're not, directly in the entertainment industry you have been we have all been roped into going to see some live performance and the way that the the show really needs to show how much people guilt you into that way it put, it put me in mind this is gonna get slightly sporty of there was a, a joke there's a joke about like um you know uh, crimes out of control my friend had a couple of New York Jets tickets sitting on his dashboard. Someone broke the window and put two more in. <laughs> that was kind of how they treated Rhonda's modern dance. Thing. It was like yes. not for free, not with not with my precious time. And 
take your modern dance with you, please. I don't mean to, I don't, I don't, I, don't, I mean, no, and I'm I, not trying to put I'm it down, it's it. just literally, sorry. No, 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 I think I'm fully on board with you, and yeah. I also want to point out something that I thought was really funny. I do not feel like it was intentional, but I think that it was unfortunate and very funny, was Jake didn't prop. He didn't need to hit the ugh yeah. no off the multicultural so was hard, which was so funny because here's it, the thing I'm going to say about that. <laughs> this this actor, yeah. listen, he, I'll tell you what's happening. This young man is listening for the Q word for him to do his line. There's not a complicated sophisticated synthesis of what's going on here. This is a soap opera, baby. Reactions need to be big, and they need to be fast. And looking back, going, uh, oh, and it's multicultural. What? <laughs> How dare yeah, you? Yeah. How? D what when, is even happening here? When, when you could be accurately described as Aryan in appearance, it's as just... as 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 Jake Handsome is, I mean, it's that's just... a really unfortunate sort of yeah. knee jerk. <laughs> like, I mean, I mean, I mean, actually, you know what? I thought about but, it for a second, but I still don't want to go. I, but I want to say that, like, in a way, that is '90s accurate, and I mean, it's today accurate, where it's like. It's part of the big impasse, and this isn't going to be fun to talk about, it, so I'll be quick. But like, <laughs> where it's, uh, it, it, it's like you can't, we can't even talk to each other as, be, be, because you bring up something that's like, I, I actually came of age in an era where that multicultural thing was was, and I, I went to Catholic school, so I don't know if that, what that says about that either, but it was part of our education. I was in a multicultural club that we had that, and like, yeah. I'm sure that like. If I got here's into the details, we'd have, like, problems, here's but... What I think, yeah. Here's what I think the overarching, yeah. like, like statement is. If you're telling me I have to learn something tonight... <laughs> Ironically going, enough. But honestly, that is that is the implication because you're absolutely right. Because multicultural... He's like, he's like, I know that you're not talking about the culture I already know so I'm very tired today and if you're going to try to make me listen I have to understand how to do some math about surface area in a bit so <laughs> that's if enough I, my if brain's going to be under that strain if I'm going yes. to this show and I'm like ugh don't you make me fail my GED you mean this can be dance too <laughs> <laughs> fuck I got to uh, I really, honestly, that is to me. That's the that's the meaning behind the meaning. Yeah, it's, really, it's, honestly, it's, it's, it, like, it, it's not about multicultural. It's about any challenge or element of novelty at a time when he's under strain. Well, it's both. Yeah. It's okay. both. <laughs> I am the why monoculture. You're, you're, you're the why not both? I, but it is. But that's exactly yeah. what it is yeah. because it's like the other way sounds like oh i don't know i feel like that's complicated but you're like well it's very simple he's never had to learn another culture so why would he want to start tonight when i just found out that i met the cram queen <laughs> yes allison hello self identified cram queen in that, college which like i just it, that we could have a, a, just an episode of Discussing, I, I think that alone. Without even batting an eyelash, she says this so confidently. Yeah. Who is calling her that? I, <laughs> to her face. No. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't even I, sound nice. I didn't like. No one said that, but in the bathroom stalls, <laughs> there was. The, it said Allison equals cram queen. <laughs> Here's the problem with cram queen. Okay. <laughs> So there's the words elephant. I wouldn't think I would hear together in that order, but here we are. Please, I don't mean to uh, cut your momentum. Listen, you're just the cram king. <laughs> you're, I, you're I, cram I crammed that in. right in. You're cram you crammed it right in. This is super meta. You made I mean, it not the, the good kind. Go the ahead. good kind. The good kind. So she. The problem with cram queen is there's too many ways to interpret this. She clearly took it as I'm cramming all night, but for it, a test. For a test, it could also mean I remembered. <laughs> When she said that, I got this visual of what my cramming, my cram queen experience was because I was very into cramming before test. But I did this thing where I was a double cram queen. I would go and get those very large 
Susie Debbie, or what are they called? The oatmeal cream pies? The big size. The big size. Like, and uh, I would have the big box. Welcome I'm like, to the world of diabetes size. 100%. I was like, let's just test that Latin ancestry. <laughs> And see how, how we live longer, do we? Though we're totally, we are totally built to eat like this. So I would cram, I would just be like, okay, you get through a chapter, you're gonna have like a cream pie. So oh, I can relate yeah, to the no, cream. So I was cramming I like that. food. I like that. Though. And I was cramming information. But let's like we're you're also, hacking your brain though, Lisa, which is very you. Well, thank you. I was feeding it with with sugar. So, yeah. but then there's also a third cram queen option, which is what we all immediately thought when this this woman. Just nonchalantly. Well, okay, no, and, let's get into the cram queen and, thing. And also, I, 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 Billy's I just, from the valley, so I, I don't know why he's not like, oh, cram queen. <laughs> <laughs> I am turned it vivid. Um, <laughs> he did it, but she that's says on his it's resume. so nonchalant. <laughs> <laughs> he will, if the need arises, he will claim to have worked at Vivid Video. Yeah, but if it if it, if it benefits him in any situation, because that's Billy all over. I worked on Cram Queen volumes one, two, and three. <laughs> Not four. They they, they went they in a different out. direction, and then five. I was back on board with the franchise. <laughs> they, this is coming on the heels of Allison talking about um, the dude from Goonies, Zach Galligan free balling something in the ad- yes. in, in the context of advertising because that was last episode so, I believe. yeah so it, it feels like so long ago in my life i don't know why but um um, um so i haven't changed personally in that time that much though i think um yeah yeah the, like I, and i i start wondering you know the like are the writers writing alice in this way that she's just <laughs> full of these like cousin to a malapropism that is like dirty but also makes her sound stupid or if like or is Courtney Thorne Smith and I don't want to ever say anything bad about her she's kind of like summer school anyways it's a movie she's in and oh, it, you have a soft it, it left a her. soft spot soft got, spot got it is she wrangling the lines and they just can't do it shit about it you know what well, I mean well here's what I like 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 I just imagining someone with a, any self consciousness typing you know Allison Enter. In college, I was the cram queen. Enter. Like, well, here's, that moment... Here's... I have trouble seeing it. So, as somebody who just had to do... You know, last year... The last gig I did was script coordinator. Please. As a person with access to Google, the cloud, thesaurus online, all these things, I imagine there's a lot of, like, game of telephone. Because okay. I don't know what the actual physical process would have been for updating scripts with things here and there. And it sounds like the, the pace of this was pretty chaotic, too. So That might have just slipped by. They might have slipped by because maybe the writer who was supposed to be, who, was, who had been, who wrote that script, and it was like yeah. their script, and they're yeah. supposed to be there. Maybe something in the moment got missed. And also, too, if you've got an actor who maybe keeps stumbling <laughs> on the same word over and over again... By the time she says cram queen, maybe you're like, oh God, do yes. you know what that sounds yeah, like? Yeah. They're like, just shut up. Listen, no one is going to be analyzing this years from now, wondering what cram queen meant. We, yeah, no, there know. is, you know, you're, you're back to, this was made in the nineties and this is, it was, a, it was a different reality in these many ways. Is there right if I talk about that thing, producer Alana? I think so. Okay. Just, you know, so I'll keep it in general terms that someone in this room oh, okay. has worked on a show where a character was written to have a signature hand gesture and um, it wasn't specified and what the actress did in the scene, a, a talented actress that I'm not putting down in any way, was something that is like <laughs> really dirty. I, what, I'm, what I'm making right now for our listeners, <laughs> uh, producer Lana is laughing at the shocker, the two, two in the pink one in the stink There's a, scenario yes yeah, so the connotation and, and, and that and i think then they got her to change Clear. it up but it just became Please. a reverse and 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 this eluded the a lot of, of professionals in this field they were seeing the shocker as this character signature hand gesture um and then the kicker of it all or is our right pa knew the whole time and, and had not said had that in the show but it was her favorite episode. <laughs> I agree. 
agree with this person. <laughs> I also think that there's something really hilarious about doubling down on an accident yeah. and just going, we're taking this back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just like... <laughs> it's our new peace sign. <laughs> I wish they had to cut it out. <laughs> that was... They, the, oh. I mean, was it, so, so so silly and the, wonderful. The, 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 that was the little thing where I was not with you was I had to like check in <laughs> because I thought that would add to the conversation. Yes, is that cool? I absolutely love that. I, I want to I want to be because here, but sometimes something is just like I've no. got to do the telepathy thing. Ooh, what's that? I think it's time for a commercial break, guys. Right. That's what it is. Listen, there's a food delivery. Hang tight. Have you got mogwais in the pantry? Cocoons in the attic? Gremlins in the mailroom? Now there's a solution. Rick's Gremlin Room. I'm Rick, and I left the fast-paced LA ad biz to go back to my roots. Nobody knows gremlins like me. Today, I fill all gremlin removal needs for you, the people of upstate Pennsylvania. Mogwai's in the pantry? Call Rick. Cocoons in the attic? Call Rick. Gremlins in the mailroom. Call Rick at Rick's Gremlin Removal. No, I'm 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 trying to do I'm trying to stop doing the thing where I um I don't know if we're back from commercial break. We are, we're we back. Are. Well, we're I'm going to say it anyways. That thing where yeah. I like totally lose track for a second, like bother. I know it's not a big deal, but so no, so. I understand. So I want to try and get back there because we we were started talking. Oh, it was the cram. We were just we still we were talking about the cram of it all. Have we crammed enough for the moment, or? I feel like we got really into the cram of it all. Okay. Because it, it then segued into a conversation about um, getting to see the, the Allison Billy. Um, yes, yeah, we, that is there. Yes. Yeah, because because it was pointed out like she she's and, and, already and, and, so over him as like, it's very brother sister. She goes me. to ten real quick. So that was because she it was like vehement the like stop it. He's so mad. Like it was the thing of like I'm gonna tell mom if you don't cut it out. But and he but and he because he was doing a like a brotherly torture thing like he was hundred he was he was reaching and touching her face. He was like, he was doing it all. He was being, as, as the kids say now, extra. He was being quite, quite uh, extra. Because like, cause that was in the course of trying to blow up her poker hand. It compl- completely. These Although he was like, secretly helping her because he's such an idiot. She's bluffing. He's talking about how he knows she has four aces. It's then, like they're running a scam, but it involves them being very, total assholes to each other. A very in- that, like, That's very Alice and Billy, though. That's this is. It is. It's like yeah. I'll be asshole cop and you be asshole cop, and then we're gonna fight so much that everyone's gonna be so uncomfortable. We'll just Those rob leave. them blind. Yes. <laughs> leave they, them, leave them uh, like with the the old uh, barrel suspender barrel that was like you going you, you over the it all falls. off. Oh, oh yes, you're sorry. Actually, yeah, sorry. You have no it, money, so a yeah. barrel is your only clothing. The barrel is your only clothing. I that, love it. That trope. I mean, I don't. That whole trope. Did, that, did that happen to humans? <laughs> Tell us in the comments down below. Historians of barrels and historians of uh, poverty. That's a that's if a real you thing. Or anyone else you know ever had to wear <laughs> a barrel because to. you got outwitted by Allison and Billy. They're 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 Bonnie and Clyde like existence where they just annoy people and yeah, they give just, them their money. They distract you by being terrible. I think we need to just give them our money or they're going to keep fighting at this dinner party. This is what we, we, we are now like kind of in the cram episode. We've like crammed ourselves in if you like, will. I don't even know how to get back. Like I, I, it shouldn't matter whether I get back. There's so much with the cram is the problem. Uh, so much with the cram. But yes, this what 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 what, what this does that I love yes, the story let's do it. is it's very obvious that like Jake goes like this. Ooh, you can see the thought bubble of he goes, Allison knows how to keep a secret, plus she's cram queen. I need to really mysteriously tell her to meet me at my apartment so I can talk to her about something I need help with. Yeah, this is kicking off the Jake <laughs> and Allison storyline that's like Really, not much of a story. The most tame. The even the at first, it shows uh, some promise because you know it's very scandalous. Like Billy comes out in the morning and is like, "Where's Alice?" He immediately goes to Jane and Michael like it's their problem. Well, what we all loved about that scene is that <laughs> the competing theories are Allison has been taken, taken style before, taken was a thing, and Allison 
got some ass. <laughs> and Michael Immediately. tosses out that I got some ass. And no one, everyone's like, oh no, no, Allison did not get laid last night. That's one thing we had to be sure of. Knowing Allison, well, we know she, we, we need to be worried. Well, I thought that, really, did they come to that conclusion? I got the impression that everyone was like, uh, Billy, she she clearly went and got well, I think up they were somebody. trying to calm him down. No, they, they definitely, the people people rejected that. I That makes no? sense. Yeah, yeah okay. no, I don't think anyone believed it. That is... I'm sorry, Allison. I like, <laughs> girl, you know what? I tried to wow, remember it moment. differently, but like, if I'm being... She's just the worst. She really yeah. is the worst because you're totally right. I kept thinking that everyone, but he, the more, I realized that it started off where Billy sounded crazy, and by the end they were like, yeah, listen to who we're talking about here. Remember the first, remember when, oh, remember when her roommate moved out, and she just was like, everybody, <laughs> everybody, her problem, Tracy. problem, everyone else's was problems. Was Tracy? Hello, yeah. Natalie. You know what, guys? Natalie. I almost tried to defend her. She look, got look, me. Look what she's, 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 she's just like with the poker thing. Get well, in it. Well, you, well, right. So, so um, let's get into to to, to, to Allison and, and Jake then, yes. real quick, because like again, I it's not much of a story, but yes, to what gets Allison as the. Everyone knows what gets her to coming out of Jake's apartment in the morning. Yes. Too much escándalo. Yes. Was that he he greets her with a proposition. You start to talk about that, and I want to get, I want to get back to the proposition just chronologically. That that's yes, that's kind of the launching point for the B story that's Jake and Allison. <laughs> is he shows up at her door and like a totally reasonable person is like, come to my apartment later. I have a proposition for you. And as we read it, the closest he comes to being like, no, but don't worry, it's not about fucking. It's just going to be like. Come on, it's serious. It's. I don't understand it. What do you? How do you see this? Okay. What are you seeing? To me, this is a phenomenon that I really enjoy every time I stumble across it, which is something that happens in television and absolutely never in real life. I do not have conversations in which I go to people's domiciles and say, "Hey, I'm going to ask you something that I could just do right now." Because, like, we both have to go to work. No one... I, I felt like it was just so... It's very plotty. And that's why you're confused. Because he... he I, have you ever tried to purposely create an air of mystery <laughs> about a favor you wanted to ask of someone? Let me ask well, you that. The, the problem like, with that is I'm <laughs> physiologically incapable of all of that. If anyone who knows me is, I am famously transparent. So, but I wouldn't. No, I wouldn't try. Exactly. So it doesn't. Sorry. It doesn't make sense. The only other thing I could figure, which actually, you know, I'm more invested in this theory. I'm about to say. Is I love that it. He, I love it so much. He knows that she thinks that he, he wants. He's dangling. He's dangling the possibility, possibility. Shall we say? And then later on, is like, hey, you're a great friend. With a lot of... Um, Will you be uh, my study buddy? Study buddy. And she's like, hey, in high school, I always dreamed about being with uh, the guy with the temper. And here we are. Is that, a, is that a type that the girls have delineated? The guy with the temper? Well, tell, me about, tell me a little bit about that. I uh, don't... Spoiler like at the high school alert, guys, stage. He is a guy with a temper. This is true. <laughs> This is true. I mean, well, he's already been the angriest barrist uh, there was, he which, was, like, oh my there's got to be, like, a bunch of oh. uh, competition for that. Yeah, so either Jake was using, you know, that, or though, uh, although I don't know, but it, no matter what, it was all very tame. Very tame. And, you know, spoiler alert, we really don't, um, I don't think that we, subsequent episodes really reflect a memory of this interaction between no. Jake and Allison, which is wild, because to just I think lose I, that. To lose it, it seems I, significant. It seems significant in episode. It really does, because I have to say that I now have a memory, now that we've gone back so many times, yeah, yeah. I now have a memory of when, you know, after having seen the entire series coming back you really do forget all of the crazy things they tried out where you were like, this interaction is just so out of, well, so much about this episode, is so out of character for the rest of the series that it's kind of fun to, to even go, oh, I forgot they tried that 
flavor combination. And it's like, <laughs> a lot of the characters are still in character. It's the show itself that's out of character. Yes, you're absolutely right. Like, they weren't sure yet where they wanted to place these people on the little Melrose map of emotions. Oh, I just remembered something, too, speaking of maps and geography. Oh, please. I hate to jump too No, far no, ahead, no. Wait, let's do it. Can we talk about the trash? I'm sorry I wasn't there for you. No, but... you were fine. The, the... Yeah, we, we really kind of fell down a rabbit hole oh. here that is is a fertile rabbit hole. Is that that's that's really gross. Sorry, I said that. Hey, that's fine. You know okay, so rather uh, better that than a barren rabbit hole. <laughs> <laughs> Janie and Sake, <laughs> Janie and Sakes, uh, Jake and Sandy are talking and walking, and in their hands are trash bags. Trash what happens bags. from there, Lisa? <laughs> from there, they first of all, I would like to say that you know, I, I I feel like you know, in real life, people would be carrying trash around, but like in an apartment this, building, easy. In yeah. apartment, apartment building, in real life, that's totally gonna happen. Imagine you're a writer on Melrose Place. Your character can be carrying. Anything. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, anything there's a prop of. Anything that could fit in their hand. You go with trash. <laughs> like, the thing about it is here's exactly what I think happened. Yeah. They, like, because you also could just go, you know what? This isn't working. Why do we have these poor young women with this trash? And also, uh, script supervisor is like, uh, guys, can we stop? Like, the girls are just putting the trash at, as soon as they're done talking, they just set it to the <laughs> side. So, in the in the actual geography of Melrose Place, we're realizing that this the trash... The place they've stopped to pile up trash. <laughs> so, we imagine a world in which there's just... Someone's putting it on someone else's This doorstep. is directly below someone's apartment. This is, this is a stink weaponized up at what we believe to be the extras we spotted in the pilot that that, that the, the only Melrose Place residents we don't meet is that I don't know if, I'm not, yeah. yes who keep to themselves and appear to pay their rent on time without any any issues whatsoever. So we've spun this out to a larger thing that involves but, volleying. Well, what, what what part do you want to get into? Well, I was gonna say it speaks to the nineties nineties of it all, where you know there were you know I was there were no Reddit threads where people were having Pickings. fun with like because again I always go back to the Game of Thrones episode where everyone was like, did you see that Starbucks cup? In and 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 immediately as soon as it aired, this was everywhere and everyone was talking about. It, but like this is the fun about this is they're pro they're just being sloppy because. They can, and also, I feel like the show might have been on the bubble at that point, and maybe they had something more expensive in mind for the girls that were here, they're like, listen, just take this trash, or, like, we have yeah. some trash. Yeah, I mean, and, and I had to think about, like, did, uh, <laughs> was it just that, like, it wasn't written through either, and it was like, in world, we can talk about this, like, trash war that goes on with people <laughs> exactly. depositing and moving around trash to different parts of the courtyard, but like in this world, in oh. this, in the part of the Melrose televisual universe that we actually occupy, yes, did they just not write an end to what to do with the bags? Mm -hmm. So well, that's like, not written. Just, yeah. That is something that the director would have made a choice or, or, to do or, or, or fail to. Like yeah, I, or, I, I, I still pictured Grant Show just being like, "I'm doing a scene and I'm done. Uh, this goes over here now." <laughs> Here's what I think happened. The, I mean, these are young actors who yeah. haven't been on camera all that much. I can imagine a world where they're like, I don't know what to do with this other hand. Can I just... <laughs> can you give me... And they're like, just give them some trash bags. <laughs> they film the scene. They're as natural as they can be, but they're like, oh, we hate these trash bags. Listen, let's do it again without the trash bags. They do it again. They're like, you know what? The trash <laughs> bags are our Dumbo's elephant. Like, I can't... <laughs> these kids, I feel like, brothers, <laughs> let's keep the take with the trash bags. That's going to look crazy. They're just depositing them by the stairs. Who is going to take the time to do the trash Zero bag geography? Yeah. And then, hey, us. That's yeah, here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that detail has been waiting for us this whole time. I really I really enjoyed it. I mean, I do want to say it does speak to a, a, you know, a, a theme throughout with this art department challenged you know, with, with creating this television... Like, under, you know, quick... Like, remember, this is before Amazon Prime. This is before... Like, people were physically having to drive to go get props and do all these crazy things. They got to physically deliver the film. Someone was still physically... I, I'm going to... Producer Ron, that would have been Razors, right? Not... 
Were they, were they still cutting film at that point? Uh, for the listeners, I was miming someone with no control over their fingers typing. Yes, he was doing I, like a... Um, like, 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 like a cat <laughs> typing. But Maybe I mean, it was transitional, but like, yeah. yeah. But it suffice was, to say, there's, there's, a lot involved. there's a lot more opportunity for accidents to happen that we can, that you can kind of see. And like, and now, I mean, it's, it's very appealing to me because, you know, everything's so perfect and curated these days that like when you see something like that, I think it just like... It's, it's kind of delightful. Rough now. hewn charm. Yes. It's it's that it's that like it's the, so quaint. the imperfection that, that that's baked in that kind of makes it yeah. Exactly. Hey, well, let's. Uh, I'm curious. Where are we on the cards? Well, well, I I I wanted to follow through on Jake and Allison. We can circle oh back God, to Rhonda, please, but like let's do don't Jake and Allison. I, we, we can do so. So oh, yeah, where they end up is delightful. I mean, I don't know if we need to talk about the big reaction to Allison coming out of Jake's apartment. Oh, absolutely. Let's. I mean, the yeah. fact that okay, first of all. Everybody was very adamant that she did not get laid. Right. Then, not only does it look like she did, but it was with like Mr. Mr. You know, house the, stud. The Lothario yes. of Melrose. Sandy's like, say what knock, now? Knock me over with a feather. Oh my gosh, she was like, as in, I'm gonna kill this woman. <laughs> she was obsessed with Jake. He yeah. cannot yeah. have anything to do with her. But yeah, that was very funny for everyone to be so shocked. And Allison was living for that reaction. Yeah, she, she for that it. moment now, she's the woman of mystery because she is, to her credit, vis-a-vis she is usually the worst. Mm-hmm. She, she, Jake asks her in confidence, okay, I'm taking the GED. Yes. That's the hope, that's the betterment we're talking about, yes. right? Uh, and she doesn't tell nobody. Even to her, like, I don't think she wanted she that kind of attention. Exactly. She wanted the attention. She wanted the amount, but I think the angle from which it came at her was would not be to her liking normally, to the point yeah. where she'd sell them out, even. I actually have to agree with you. Okay. Sorry. I have to say that yeah, I think that spieling. I may have even yeah. Yeah. thought mistakenly that people thought that maybe Allison got laid, because I was like, you know what? She's not particularly terrible this this episode. She was pretty chill, actually. Relatively. I mean, she, um, she, you know, she's always going to be a little, just the right amount of condescending. It's her everyday insufferability. Just yeah. a little, like, where she's got to explain something extra to you that even happens... Yes. I'll jump ahead to this. But Please. The, the, uh, in the midst of all the rumor part of the episode <laughs> where, in fact, as we know... Studying's going on. Everyone else thinks fucking's going on. <laughs> um, Billy has this vision of how the seduction oh, yes. goes down in which... Uh, um, uh, Allison is still a goddamn know-it-all. She is, even like, in like, her like, seductress mode. Yes, the spider <laughs> has to be explained to Jake. Oh my god, that's right. Who, also in Billy's version of things, is a psychopath. Like, yes. it was like, it was like Grant's show sort of pre-auditioning for Patrick Bateman, almost. <laughs> I don't know, I feel like Jake kind of is, like, low-key, like, really scary. He goes yes, on oh. it way too much. <laughs> but that is, but I Th- told there's you... A, there's a flash of a moment before he kisses Allison, which we will talk about, for yes. sure. Where he, 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 it's a look, there's, we're, we're just going to go down the goddamn rabbit hole, but <laughs> suffice to say, it's a, it's a scary face for a minute that like, I would, that would pause my kissing action if I briefly got the like, uh, wolf murder eyes. I did really appreciate the use of the sort of fantasy explanation because yeah. again, this is an episode where they were like, maybe thinking to themselves, hey, what if this is like a device we could keep using throughout? Mm-hmm. I did think it was such a missed opportunity for like Sandy and Billy. I, like, listen, yeah. this isn't a spoiler, <laughs> but you know, in a more in a more Melrose Place world that's got madness brewing, that this is like, Mwah, hey, the yeah, two of that... us want those two. Let's ruin them and make them jealous. And so, like, there's, they're not see... getting the the scheming isn't as natural. That's yeah. like a recurring one, I oh think, too. Is people it's... people <laughs> fucking people? It's like crosswise. It's like we want to break them up, so let's fuck. Yeah, so let's. And then do we'll something. get the other ones, and it works sometimes too. Not, I don't, I don't think any of that cuts to the spoiler. We won't say whom. No, but yeah, like, it's very. It's yeah. it, it that 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 is baked in, and and it doesn't happen. Well, it, you know, just crosswise, Ron is 
plotline has this Teresa character, which yes. we, whom, whom we will talk about. Oh, but yes. also, producer Lana pointed out, I mean, it was you, I'm sorry, I just want to give it give plenty of credit all around, that um, in a later Melrose phase, she wouldn't just be stuck in the Matt and Rhonda storyline. Yes. She'd be nosing around. She'd be fucking with Billy over here. Usually... She'd be blackmailing uh, uh, How many uh, out of... Jane for some reason. <laughs> like somehow she she got into, she, she found out that something, you know. You're completely heading on to something which I really love about the show. It's at its best to me when, and you know, this is not going to spoil anything really. Mm-hmm. It's a wonderful template of, you know, we have a new castmate, which mm-hmm. is some out of towner with a past connection to one of the characters who often a has a secret connection to another character. So then oh, it's like... Oh, man. Yeah, that is the, like... And so then it's like... And that's where the real fun ridiculousness <sighs> happens is when you're you're like, wait, so all of you guys knew each other back in <laughs> high school or something? Listeners like, and viewers, <laughs> you will see this made manifest where it's just... It, 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 it's, it happens it's another, over and over it's and another, over and over. It's another it's aspect of like, they didn't even really think ahead to VHS necessarily because it's like... They, the show Bible has holes in it down but, the line where it's like there are things that, mut- that are mutually exclusive that have all been, all, all been said to happen. A hundred percent. And I mean, again, I want to, you know, it, it cannot be stressed enough how I can't even fathom the difficulty of trying to maintain a show Bible of something like this because you, because like I remember, um, guys, this is totally real. I submitted to Days of Our Lives to, to be a writer. I think it was like last year, mm-hmm. and I I did not appreciate fully how many episodes of that show that were in existence. We are talking in the like I want to say four thousand something. It's thousands. But it man, is that's where you're really... just like. And they, they just keep going. Ba-doom, and ba-doom, there was ba-doom, not ba-doom, a ba-doom. database that you could just quickly Google or search or whatever. It was all on paper. And people, yes, right, like telling just, other people, and just like under, and like there's some characters that some people spent their whole career just on this show, and you have to keep track of how many crazy things they did. So it's just yeah. to me, it's that is always so fun. Yeah, if they're even able, like I love the accidents where you yeah. accidentally forget that like <laughs> an actor played a different character and then you brought them back and you're acting like this isn't a thing. <laughs> Not to constantly go Melrose Place analogy Star Trek, but yes, I think it yes, has yes. been said by Gene Roddenberry that like part of the thing with the fan base is to keep track of the continuity but have a mistake every now and then 100%. for the fans to interact with. Like it was, it, it, yes. it is another element. We've talked a few times about these type of fan bases being sort of presaging what the internet would unleash on the world yes. in, in this aspect. I completely agree with you. And it's also this really um, immediate feedback that you get from people who are incredibly invested in what you're making. It's and, and also they feel a sense of ownership over these characters. And in some ways... They've spent more time with these characters. Like, if you're uh, somebody yeah. who's brought in on a certain season, they're, it's, it, 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 it's, it's this, you know, this is why Misery is my favorite Stephen King novel, because it is the manifestation <laughs> of, you created this, you created me, these are the rules you established as a writer. It's just such a fun... I just, I just think that's always so interesting, like the way that, like, c- that the audience actually influences the con- the content. Because I really feel like I was, because when I was looking at maybe you know at days or whatever, you look at their social media accounts, people, people comment with like the seriousness of, hey, this is what you did with this character, mm-hmm. and I don't approve, or mm-hmm. I really like that you're taking it this direction. Keep going. Like, like it's very... Right. It's and, they, and, they, and they have the short turnaround where they can really integrate that in real time now. A hundred percent. Or, like, even just knowing, like, having the ability to say, hey, um, people are really responding to, for example, this queer storyline. They're like, hey, we got to keep... You have to allow us to keep doing this because it got such a positive reaction mm-hmm. online. And so it's this weird... It's very... It, it, it is crazy how... You know, we do think of it as broadcast television, but it is like, especially soap operas, because yeah. they're the oldest ones, and they were the most blatant about, these are literally operas to sell soap. 
I think that this is a moment where it's good to let some of the listeners know, piggybacking on exactly what you're talking about, the 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 the, inter, the interaction with the, yeah. with the uh, between the creator and the fan base that back then a lot of it was like fan mail like oh, people yes. went to the trouble to put pen to paper yeah they did. or even perhaps typewriter and lick a stamp and and yeah. do whatever it took to get that out to the heroes of the u.s postal service yes um it wasn't just like you're on the toilet and you don't like something i mean not just this is, sounds like an old guy screed in some ways it might be a lot better that you can be on the toilet and just be like don't like. No, 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 but I know what you mean. Like, it has a... It's a lot easier. There was a barrier. Well, yeah, it, you have to make... It take, took more of an effort, so they did take it very seriously. Like, you would physically... I can't remember what... There were a couple of shows that... I want to say this might have been maybe in... Even, like, the 60s or whatever. Like, if they liked a show, it's like, hey, every everybody would get together and mail to the network, like, a bit of... Like, you put something in the envelope as, like, yeah. a symbol. I can't remember what show it was, but, like, to try to keep shows yeah. on the air that, to there, demonstrate. There was, there, was a, there was, like, sort of a, a signal. There yes. Was, there was, a, there was a, a code. Yeah. A coded like, message. Yeah, exactly. Like, oh, hey, we're trying. I can't remember what it was. I feel like it was even Breaking Bad or something. It was like, hey, mail the studio this to dem. If you want to keep the show on the air, let them know. It's sort of like a form of protest. If you have the um, story on this, down, please drop the link down below or let us just... So, you know, at our account? Yes, you can at our account. Because we, we, we are ignorant of the exact details here, but yes. But well, we'll even Google it, it right and, after. And, and it's really, yeah, but, I'm, but no, this is just, everything moves forward, <laughs> not backwards. There's no going back. The back is for, is for the folks who are enjoying this right now. I could get into a whole thing about the nature of time and reality that you guys don't want. Um, but I think it's very canny because it's someone thinking ahead to the wheelbarrow of keychains, yes. say, right? No, 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 that is, right. That, that is mm-hmm. the ultimate effect that it was supposed yes. to achieve at the time was that uh, Joe, uh, network executive, in his cold heart, would be confronted with more keychains than he'd ever seen in his life or thought existed and be like, okay, leave the nerd show on the air, whatever. Oh, I have the perfect example for this, actually. It's, uh, it's a wonderful life. The letters that he shows in court at the end of all the kids writing to Santa Claus, it's that, it's that image of, hey, each letter equates to a person. It is the, it's it's the original metric. like. It is the original metric. And it goes beyond the Nielsen box because the Nielsen box is, you know, it's like literally something tangible that you can see. And uh, It's a moment where the self-selection part is, not, is, is a feature and not a bug because it's, yes. it is, it's the barrier to entry. Like, this many people went to that inconvenience. You know, this many I, I people mean, are passionate about this thing, and it's weirdly democratic in a way. It, it's interesting, but yeah, you know. So it's uh, there's a long history of people voicing either their support or their lack of approval outside of the ratings uh, scale and metric. So yeah, dude. It's good I hope we come back to this topic. I, I, I'm going to go way off the reservation and just it, say please. briefly that I want to get out there that um, in the 80s, uh, in the Batman comics, Jason Todd Robin was killed off after a phone fan poll. Oh. That came down on the side of Kill the Little Brad. Oh, wow. And this might be conspiracy theory or maybe it's like no duh and it's just out there as a fact, but like that phone poll was hacked. <gasps> there were mischievous because before there were even personal computers and code to get into there were like the phone freaks right there were yeah. people who like had the had like special ways of interacting with the phone lines that I don't understand frankly and so I just want to get that out there for some reason I, I like feel like that that's not lot. talked about enough I still, still still see things written on some of the nerd sites I read about how like there had been this the the, the character was so ill liked that this was the result of fan interaction when I believe it to be the thumb on the scale from people who had advanced ways of spamming that account. So, uh, but like, uh, see, I don't want to go like super, you know, no, heavy, no, heavy. I, are, are we okay? Or what, what do we, what do you think? I, I really like that you bring that up because that is to me very important to remember that 
just because you're getting the feedback that people like something and it's popular doesn't always mean it's the right choice to make. Ultimately, it rests on your shoulders as the person who's creating it. It is my opinion. Like, it's nice to know how people think and feel about it, mm. and but you also shouldn't be exclusively driven by that because then things like that happen. Where you're like, oh, it could you, be... You get twisted out of shape. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, you know, I always think, you you know, go with your instinct. I want to pull it back to the, what happened in the episode now. Because I took us way, way off. And I don't I even know if it's it. okay to say what I... I don't know. We'll talk about that later. It's all good. I, I, may have, I may have slipped at the tongue earlier. Um, and Billy... We were, so some of this... We, part of how we got here was about Billy's reaction to the idea of Allison and Jake. Which, oh I mean, gosh, like, great. factually, this is supposed to be along the lines to a complication in the will they, won't they of, of, of Billy and Allison, I think, is, is, is part of the intent here. But, like, I realized in this episode... I'm sure it's not the first time we've seen it, but, like, Billy puts on a real motherfucking sulk when um, Allison says no to going to the beach with him, which seemed like an improvised plan. And I know yeah. they're buddies and all, but, like... You you know that like no is a complete sentence thing was not in effect here because Billy is like gets uh, uh, his 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 uh, generals chapped over the idea that she would be hanging out with Jake for a mysterious reason rather than coming to the beach with him and he puts on a real sulk and I realize that that's there's a whole era of, of Billy that we're gonna see for quite a while now yeah where he is this sulky son of a bitch oh yeah that's right because he um. Well, I kind of feel like this is where he and Allison start their their little... I mean, this is where their relationship really starts. Because the two... I mean, the way... Antagonizing they, each other so, openly. So, I mean, that <laughs> we're is a all, comfort level. We're all classic <laughs> filmic and televisual relationships of... Uh, I mean, I've, been, I've had roommates, adult roommates, for a good chunk of my adult life. And, like, <laughs> I... The level of comfort that with which you have to have... <laughs> person to snap at them so quickly and then for him to touch her face like it's very the funny it's like you already can see the arguments that they have as roommates and it's right it, 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 it's like it's kind of a telling detail that he tries best. to chuck her chin and she like ne nearly bites his head off the thing that's great about them is there is never any honeymoon period like he <laughs> annoys her from the jump she annoys him. From he, moment zero. One, zero. He, 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 yes, we remember in the uh, pilot, he just launches a terribly verbose uh, monologue at her about his dumb life. And she's like, ugh, you're so annoying. <laughs> Get in here. <laughs> <laughs> you're the roommate for me. <laughs> exactly. Um, so against all odds, it seems, and they, they hang a, 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 a kind of a lantern, lantern on this, Jake and Allison make a kind of a connection. Yes, they do. Um, and it's it's they keep talking about these tropes of he's now he's the sort of bad boy or the let's just actually go boy. with your uh, boy with a temper he's slash the dropout. Temper. Yes, and Allison man. unsurprisingly is the goody two shoes oh, high achiever on her not in high school not yet a cram queen no, <laughs> not um, yet. So, <laughs> but, but what what do you think of the whole dynamic of that kind of being the text? of the Jake Allison connection that starts over, you know, multiple choice questions. Well, I think that, you know, the whole archetype from which Jake Hansen originates is James Dean. And it's that motorcycle, you know, driving up to... The funny thing is they're quite close to the Griffith Observatory, I would guess, possibly, because it looks like they're shooting that right off Mulholland. Yeah. And it is very much the, like, you pointed out, make-out point. He takes her to make-out point... They have their little, like, high school moment. And um, not this is not required a bonus footage. This yeah. is not a spoiler alert. But, guys, I just want to hang a lantern on high school. Please just note, whenever someone... It's mentioned how people were behaving in high school because when you have to add characters and throw in backstory, it's very it fun to remember... What was said? Yeah, in yeah. Early no, days. well, you know, we are we here. We we are tracking all the of the innocence of it now is all I need to say. So well, this actually leads me to a question I want to ask you. This is this is all, producer Alana and I's reaction was: we know why Allison kisses Jake. Yes, that we know why anyone would kiss Jake. Why does Jake kill, kiss Allison in your mind? I feel like Jake. 
just does whatever he wants to do <laughs> in the moment. If she had been a hamburger and he felt like a burger in that moment, he would just eat it. He is, he's very Jax-ish to me in the sense that like, this is not We're, we're crossing like over into the uh, Vanderpump, Vanderpump universe. Vanderpump universe. Uh, please, please continue. You know, and I mean, because cause that's a type, you know. Uh, an archetype that you find in, in Los Angeles, the, the the person with the you know the the, the dream, but like also we I don't know yet what Jake's dream is. You know, it's he not doesn't quite clear. he doesn't he says in this I don't know where this is going, but and also, I feel like I I should have a GED when I get there. One hundred percent. And you point out something that I really appreciate for future mm-hmm. edification and knowledge is he does mention some career pursuits of his past we learned that jake yes oh was, i have was, i have stuff to say about you that have, you have opinions and i i'm I, I, can we stay on the kiss that. real quick and then we, let's bounce straight into that love it plot wise whatever you guys saw it like everyone he, knows he aces the test great <laughs> i love this <laughs> with the kiss our thoughts in the style of this GED. We had we had a multiple choice for the, the, why 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 did why did why did Jake kiss Allison? I love this. I I crammed it okay, before. Yeah. So so a okay. Jake just wants Allison to shut up. And putting his oh. mouth on her mouth is the shortcut. And that's a just that's that's a. Away. <laughs> B. All this talk about high school is really turning Jake on. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That is an interesting. Mm-hmm. C, all of this talk about high school is kind of awkward for Jake, who has recently dated a high schooler, <laughs> and he wants to stop that talk, and kissing is a path to that. Yes, I like, oh, sorry. I'm, I'm appreciating these options. Finally, uh, last full-on option, D, this is the only way that Jake knows how to end an interaction with a woman. You've... All possibilities, you, right? That's the problem. You've created... Is it possible these are all correct? The E, all of the above, is I think the correct answer. That's where, that's, where, that's where we settled on. Shut I her really, up, high school boner, high school awkward, and also, uh, uh, what, what else do I do? I'm here now with this uh, 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 so, soft lips and uh, hair. Yes, you've... I think that you've... I, the hamburger's here. What am I going to not eat it? So, to your point. You... <sighs> The options I can, that I can picture Jake effing saying that, by the way. I you, don't know why I'm censoring my effing self all of a sudden. You you have hit upon... Okay, here's what, <laughs> Please. here's what I see. I see an outline of a, a Jake outline drawn on a flat piece of paper. And it's like a pie chart. What you did is you just separated all the motivations in, that he for every interaction that he ever has. <laughs> You've given me a, a response. You're going to come video. back to this. You can make it a dartboard and go. How's Jake going to react? And you throw it at the wall, and it's like, boom. Okay, well, this part of my trigger response um, was activated. I, that was. I, I, I'm I'm going to declare this to be the Lewis heuristic. I think it might be a heuristic. Heuristic uh, is I, a scientific. There's term. probably there's probably there's a really smart term for what we what we've developed here. And maybe we should just bring it back in the future. We may have when to delve. Jake When Jake is in a scenario, how do these competing impulses, and in this case, harmonizing impulses, play out in any given scenario? I, I love to I feel I feel good about this. You should. I don't, I, I don't feel certain. You know what? Uh, philosophy type people or game theory, machine, I don't know what specialty you have that could help me answer this, but if it's not a heuristic, what is it? Uh, tell us below, please. Please. I, I, I'll admit, I'm like pseudo-intellectual, and this is heavy on the pseudo. Um, I'm not okay, even. last thing on Jake and Allison, and I, I think the, 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 we, we've circled around this kind of a thing throughout. The show itself does leave us with the question of whether, kind of, whether Jake and Allison fucked. We I, get the chase kind of make out, make out, Probably to commercial. Yes. And then it's another day. Another day has dawned. Here is my theory on that to go back to our whole fan reaction thing. Um, These are still the days of tinkering 
of deciding which characters would be oh fan my. favorites, would be interest. So I feel like it's purposely vague Ellipsis. to see what the fan reaction was. You son of a bitch. That might be it exactly. I mean, it, because that way you can say, hey, if people were like super on board with this, but I have to say, I cannot imagine a world in which everyone was like, yay, we want Jake and Allison to be together. Well, I, at just, least the, the, I just don't think it's Knowing there. these characters as we do, the answer is obvious. No, they did not fuck. They 100%. You, we we, we, we no. independently landed at the same thing. Sure, Allison bent over a motorcycle atop Mulholland. Here's another thing. That man does not own a fitted sheet. <laughs> I'm saying there is not a couch pro- or a, a mattress protector. This is a woman who's like, I live right there. I am, no. Yeah, I see, I, 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 even, I, I even got stuck on, let's say, super horny, we estimate second base over the shirt at most, I, I just, would happen I, out there on Mulholland. How do you sustain that mood riding back down to, to Melrose, and then you get there and you have the reality of how Jake lives his life, but which is fine for many women, but not Allison. No, no, no. I just, I feel like it's emblematic of something she doesn't want to get involved in. <laughs> I have to pause for one second because I really have to pee. Another commercial break, guys. We're raking in the dough. <laughs> Check it out. Rick's Gremlin Removal is now Rick's, Rick's Gremlin, Gremlin Removal and Supply. I'm Rick, and I've been offering Gremlin Removal services in upstate Pennsylvania for weeks. The time is right to expand my offers. No longer do I only remove gremlins. I remove gremlins and I supply gremlins. Got a gremlin and don't want one? Call Rick. Want a gremlin and don't got one? Call Rick. At Rick's Gremlin Removal and Supply. Formerly Rick's Gremlin Removal. We're back from break. We're back from break, guys. We're back to Melrose Madness and everybody is... So yeah, I, well, I think we got through it. Like Jake and Allison absolutely did not fuck you. The, the way the alternate universe in the Melrose Television Universe, the multiverse, yes, where they tried to write that retroactively will not work. It, no, that, that interaction could not have been that. I yeah, it's it, it is. Um, you know, it is just two ships passing in the night. Really. And Allison kind of gives him that speech almost as if she's letting him down easy. Yeah. And I think he's like, yeah, sure, whatever. Because, <laughs> see, we could get, like, round and round on this stuff. But, like, there's a moment where she seems to be dangling the offer. Yes. And he ends up just doing shtick, ultimately, at, like, after giving... He gave her nothing, bounced it back to her, gave her nothing, and then he's like... Yeah, it's the sand... He what's the deal with math, anyway? <laughs> funny, fu- pretty and funny... Jake is so much. She's just like, he, he's not going to make this easy. All right, so, so Jake's job, <laughs> there's a larger context to talk about how this is an episode with plenty of backstory. Yes. For, for, for a few people. Jake's jobs, um, I find fascinating, but also irksome. Um, um, uh, I, I, I'm trying I, to remember I, what he did. Was there, it's always very his first thing color. out of His first thing out of run, like leaving home because he couldn't take his stepdad and his stepmom and his, his actual... His, his bio mom was terrible, and they're in a trailer, so he leaves home to work in a lumber mill in Port, outside Portland in Portland, I think. Yes. Dot, and then later on, we get um, oil rig worker. Um, That's and I, a I'm, very I'm, 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 I'm going to hold one aside and just go backwards and say, of course, we've seen Jake be a barista. He's now a mechanic. He was briefly actually an artist, but he wouldn't say so because... His view is skewed, um, and then there was a security but he's a guard. At one point, Secu- well, he he was a security guard who like helped cover for someone stealing, I think perfume. It was really that lady is. I off remember now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> here's what I want to get to, and it, that and and I have like a little rant. I don't want to totally take over the show here <laughs> for a moment, even because like I bet you'll have better things. I'll I'll throw this at you, and you tell me what you think. Let's see. It is said of Jake. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> it is said of Jake that one of his past jobs is literally lumberjack. I think in Juno. No, no, that was oil rig. It doesn't matter. It is said that he's a lumberjack. And this is one of these moments where I get a like for the for the multitudes that Melrose Place 
contains. Sometimes the writers really cop out with how they get to things. And I think that part of the story here is Jake's background. He, he is, he's the resident hunk. Duh. Look at him. But he's also a flannel-wearing guy from Seattle. Oh, that's right. Right? I'm forgetting that. And it's like, there is sort of like, Pacific Northwest is the lumber industry and yes. dot, dot, dot behind grunge. But my belief is that here's what happened as they developed the concepts for, okay, give us Jake's jobs. Let's, let's go around the room. Who's got a good, <laughs> solid, blue collar, maybe high risk? He's a tough guy. Uh, what did Jake do? What did Jake do? Go. And, and mm-hmm. someone was like, oh, wait, okay, so Seattle, Seattle, uh, grunge, right, right? Okay, those guys, like Kurt Cobain, he's got, like, flannel, flannel. He's dressed like a jumper. Lumberjack! Jake was a lumberjack! And it's I, like, you yes. motherfuckers copped out. Lumberjack should have been the one that was thrown off the table because it's too goddamn obvious. <laughs> Instead, and I don't know, I might be slurring people who are slandering people, rather, who, like, you know, came to that honestly, and I'm just being a dick about it. <laughs> I want to acknowledge that there are other points of view about this, but... <laughs> I managed to work up some strong feelings about this, Lisa. And now I want to hear what you thought, think. I have a, a theory that um, producer Chris and I have been cultivating that this show somehow cannot help but be influenced by Twin Peaks on the regs. Ooh, yeah. And so oh, yeah. we have a like peak this. at the Pacific Northwest. I also think you're giving people a lot of credit because um, I feel like a lot of people in that room had never done any kind... Like, it's a lot they wouldn't, of, like... They wouldn't bother making the jump, in other words, or...? Uh, I... I I'm sorry, I don't mean to talk over you. But. I don't know. The, the thing is, if you look at who was creating this work, how, how many people were like, hey, what did, your, what did your parent do for a living? What did your parent do for a living? I don't know. Mine worked in an office. Mine worked in an office. Well, hey... What's a what job? About, what's a job that people in the middle states have? Uh, uh, the, you know what? The, Lumberjack... This is real. I, I've pers- well, I've, by the way, <laughs> gainful adult employment, sort of supporting my lifestyle, has all been office work. Yeah, 100%. So, and, and, and I have creative endeavors that do or don't happen, and I have... How would you, you nailed, have you, any you, concept you, you, of you, it? You nailed it because I've been there. I've been like, okay, I'm tired of writing about people like me. What, what, what do other people do? <laughs> and it, and that, that, so that's a real phenomenon. That's and great, Lisa. I think you got to it. I think I, perhaps, we have a special guest for the, our listeners may not be aware, but um, Conan the cat, Conan uh, Maximilian pet. Lewis uh, has, has come in, stepped into the sunlight, and um, he'll be joining us for this segment. That was really so, sweet. So, so, so all those feelings that I had, I invented all of that. That's good. I feel like this is a therapy session now. It might. This is, this is, this is the best that my therapy sessions get where I'm like, Oh, fuck. Why did I care? <laughs> no, it's, it's, listen, I have to say, I have, um, what does your parent, what do your parents, wait, your parents do, what do your parents do for a living? If you They're retired now, I th- and I don't think they'd mind me sharing this about them. They're private, private enough people, but, um, my mother worked in healthcare her whole working life, more or less, uh, first as a physical therapist. I think I've mentioned on the show, that's how she met my dad. She, uh, his dad was a patient of hers. Um, so you know, I I, I owe my place, I, 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 owe, I owe my existence in part to my grandfather's stroke. I think is what that says. Oh wow! Can I? Was, I I'm, I've never thought about it that way. Go ahead. I, I okay. The fact that your parents' romance originated in a hospital. Along those lines. Me, along those lines. Just like, I mean, frankly, the the families kind of knew of each other. Like my my grandfathers had had, had knew knew one another like casually. So was there, it, was, uh, there were known quantities involved, but the literal, like, meat cute of it all is my mom actually showing up as an in-home physical therapist for my grandpa. And, and then years later, dot, 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 she, 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 she was a respiratory therapist. And my dad, um, I mean, you know, I'm, I am an immigrant. I can reveal that. My parents, also immigrants. I, I, I came here two years old. So, um, yes, I don't know. I love talking about myself so much. Well... This is, I don't know if you realize this, but what you just told me is the most classic soap opera storyline that you could ever experience. This is, Ricky Martin's character on General Hospital was a little, like, well, he's- I am not genre savvy. But, but like, what I'm pointing out is, 
You, like, this Wayne, like, did you realize that your parents could have been a Wilshire Memorial love story origin? Like, that's what I'm saying here is yeah, no, hospital yeah, I, and people taking care of each other. And that's why, like, Lumberjack, these very visceral oh, sort of jobs that, you know, people yeah. have, those are the ones that you, you want to, you know, have you, on a soap opera. And you don't meet your future wife being, like... On the job as a lumberjack. You, <laughs> I don't know why I'm often. putting that out, but that just occurs to me. Not as That much. it's another, it, well, it's part of the divide between the worlds. That, and I've, I've, I've admitted what part. I grew up suburban through the hard work of my parents and, uh, um, you know, uh, had a lot of the luck of looking, you know, mostly straight, mostly white, mostly male. Well, you know, you were living that Jake life. <laughs> just coasting in you know, the just kind of just, sure. yeah. But like, yeah, no, I just think it's more of like, you know, I don't even think it's that, that complicated. I really just think it's like, he's, it's like when my sisters and I would play Barbies. We were like, what's this Ken doll do? And I'm like, he's a bartender. I didn't know what that meant. I was just like, that seems fun. <laughs> I think it's a that seems fun moment with, that they're doing with the lumberjack choice. So, so we wrap up all this nonsense with our GED party at Shooters. <laughs> um, everyone's proud of Jake. He's now oh, been yeah, disclosed. He is, and he okayed Allison to disclose what this all was about. And he knows he aced the test, which God bless him. Yes. But, but so there are a couple things with the party. And one of them is the, the, the mortar boards worn by the other celebrants, so to speak. Like, it's a very confusing scene. It's, you know, we're watching, we are watching a Melrose place where everybody's in everybody else's business. Everybody's, like, willing to make the effort to buy these graduation caps and pass them out among, among everyone. And just, it's like, the, you know what? But this is the, the rabbit bag. hole. This is it's the rabbit the hole where I, where, I, where I tell you which party city they would have bought it from. Yes. Uh, on Melrose. But, but, but please go ahead. It's, it's. The hats are the trash bag of that scene. <laughs> it's just like get, and they have more boards in props. So sure, but like, right? yeah, this it's is, there. It's a lot of effort to have gone and gotten these for, for Jake's world. little party. Not not clear who did it. In world IRL too. It's kind of annoying. <laughs> well, but no, you had a really good. Uh, we we when I say a deep dive, when I say close reading, you you had a read actually on the politics of the. Party mortar board purchase. Oh yeah, and 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 your lead suspect. I'm I'm gonna say I remember you saying Allison, and I want you to tell me why. Well, it was a very murder on the Orient Express situation <laughs> here, where it's not clear who who done it, who bought these hats, who done bought these hats. Like I don't know. So my guess was like the person who I could conceive of like go like it's kind of her job sort of is to do a bit of a gopher would be Allison. But then I thought to myself this person would have immediately taken credit for doing that quite vocally. This particular the, person top would want seat. people to know. 100%. So then I rescinded and said, mm. I don't, you know what, I think I'm wrong. I don't think it's Allison, actually. After okay. hearing some feedback. I missed that cue. I, I, okay, so right. Well, then, then did, did we then land on Sandy just because she's the one who seems to be casually altruistic? She does that all as, the time. Just as a characteristic. I that, could see that. She's obsessed with Jake, though. That, yes. Oh. That, that, too. <sighs> Big She's time. been left out of this whole studying thing. Constantly. He does this. He does this lady so dirty. She She's there really for what he, likes him. She, she's there for what he wants or needs from her. Is all. And, 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 and it's increasingly just confidant. Like, 100%. I just got, I got a lot of thoughts bouncing around the old Jake head and I got to throw them out at somebody. Sandy's reliable. She might bounce back at me that she thinks we're both sociopaths, but I'm just going to, I'll walk past that too. 100%. And I think, too, it's very funny to hear the term friend-zoned uh, so <laughs> thrown around so willy-nilly by these men. But, like, if we were to act like that is an actual thing, look at what Miss Sandy goes through. Because the truth is, Jake's not even a good friend to her. <laughs> like, when does he get involved in any of her capers? No, there are a couple. I mean, it's like the Matt and Ron of it all, in fact, whom we'll get back <laughs> oh to in God. a moment. Um, <laughs> the last the last thing we, I want to talk about, on because on, we, we both... we. All four of our brains went here dually, individually. Um, I'll draw a chart that we'll um, put in the video. Sure. That'll explain what I'm saying much clearer than I am. Sure. Um, that, um... It's all good. Hey, you're talking about the final thing on the Jake Allison. Is this a, a, a Jake Allison wrap-up? It was on... It's, 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 it's entirely a wrap-up. I feel like it was on my cards and I'm just being a dum-dum. Oh, Yeah. Yes, we came to this duly individually. The other patrons at Shooters 
in the midst of this grand gala that the Melrose residents have put on for their own benefit, you're at a bar. Tell me, Lisa, you're at a bar and this party breaks out. What's happening? Tell me. Sh- Shooter's regular, perhaps, whatever. What's your POV on this? It reminds me of when I watched the movie Cocktail. And I thought to myself, this is a thing that is adorable on camera in real life. You know what? Everybody got off work. We're all trying to get our happy hour, you know, our orders in. We're chill. These jerks are acting acting like this is Jake doesn't even own this place <laughs> like nobody owns it. they're not affiliated in any way shape or form well the their owner, friend works there their that's it which like there. should be a like don't do this thing a hundred percent but don't do this at her workplace but it kind of goes back to the trash mm-hmm. of it all where we are living in these people's world and they will remind you every day that you are not starring in this like you are just a background person who also could double as a D and D cubicle ghoul <laughs> the, the extras are extras is what you're saying they're not yes to they, them it's so it's like in a way the question i'm posing might be relevant <laughs> because like there is no shooter's regular point of view unless it intersects with the story that i i just would love the to hear the the perception of like oh like the shooter's regular the norm of shooters who's like i'm just trying to have a rapport with this bartender, but every time these people show up, it's like I get tossed to the side. They don't even pay their tab. It's wild. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean it, it is. I could, I can imagine, and like mm-hmm. maybe it's a theme we'll come back to. Is like how how does this look from the outside of what's going on in shooters at the moment? It, so in brief, it looks like a pack of assholes making a bunch of noise and taking over the place as if it's their own. It sounds fun to me. <laughs> All of this talk, I'm going to kind of almost use this as a hinge. We'll see if it works. All of this talk makes me think of Coyote Ugly. Yes. Because that was, I've, I've actually seen that film through and through oh, somehow. Yes. Um, it's a classic. And I think if Cam Gigande is in it, that might, I don't know. I've come to find myself to be a Cam Gigande fan. I think The best you... thing about, sh- uh, about uh, Cabaret, uh, never mind. Coyote Ugly, I'm about to blow your mind. I think he might be too young to have been in it. I don't know, Eris. Point being... I'm like, the sort of thing that makes the bar in that movie a hit is the sort of thing that would send me boomeranging out of a bar, potentially leaving my card behind Imagine in the process. Imagine a world in which you're like, hey, can I get, can I just get like, um, I just want a tequila. <laughs> yes, yes, and yes. And then like, it's a, suddenly everyone jumps on the bar. It becomes a show. stomping in your face, sprays you with water, and you're like, I am going to get arrested tonight because I'm going to pull you down and you're gonna get really hurt because I'm just gonna grab that ankle real quick like you are Sandy at the pool and I'm Jake in it I swear to god I used to like the idea of putting Mm, an extra step between me and that drink is just I can't it's the the same cocktail thing why are you putting on a show I just want relief from my current condition imagine Jake doing that as a barista when he was the <laughs> razzle dazzle guy barista, giving <laughs> razzle dazzle barista. In Spin the off. Morning. By the way, at five a.m., <laughs> people are like <laughs> an americano. You say, <laughs> I, I don't know what you throw in this scenario at all. <laughs> you stand. You do a handstand he's, while uh, he's doing steaming the some milk. He has. The, I'm sorry. He jumps on the counter. He starts stomping. The coyote. Off. You have. Thank you. This is the prime era of things on TV that aren't real in real life. Like prom on TV at this point was yeah, unrecognizable. Yeah, no. There were so many dance offs. It's it's really you're highlighting something really great about the nineties, which is there's a lot of these weird tropes that we see on TV where you are realizing that there are now adults in their thirties and forties who have spent their lives watching TV and so at what point is it art imitating life and life imitating art and like da, 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 where you're like you reach the point where we say things like who 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 is doing this <laughs> who is going ha, 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 she just left the room mm. <laughs> it's like at what point did we go that is a trope we understand like we can sit here and go oh 
you know, certain actors who I won't name drop yet because, you know, spoil it. Well, I will, I'll just say it. Jack Wagner. Goodness gracious. Jack Wagner will be on the uh, mains yeah, of you, this show and he will be that. great. But, Spoilers. I don't think that is going to upset but basically, a, a single person. I, I, I just wanted to point out this is a very soap opera specific thing where yeah. someone leaves a room and you take that moment to let us know how that your, scheme hits you. Because, like, either you're like, ha ha. I already knew. Or, well, that didn't go as I planned. And so it's yeah. just this very... And, and then, then there's got the music swells to a certain kind of sting to go with the mood of how you have now re- done the summary of your response to the scene. Yes, and then we're still living in... This is the this is the prime era for people doing things in TV shows just because we know that, like... Like, someone falling out of frame. Like, hey, you still exist beyond that frame. So it's like, it's really fun still to see... But do they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, not if it's as your a, last as, as uh, a, episode on the season, on the show. No. As a died in the wool solipsist, these are questions. <laughs> uh, but also, like that's when the best mustache twirling happens is in the reaction. Not, I just I want to stay on that for one. Yes, my favorite. So, uh, Rhonda was actually more of the A story. Yes. I, I think that we've done Allison and. Jake, more justice than they deserve, frankly. Straight up. In yes. Man. So Rhonda's own little redemptive arc. Um, um, begins with this reconnection with Teresa. Yes. Uh, who is, has this a bit, like, again, whatever. The performance is a little strange. All of it is very. Uh, I don't know anything about the dance world. Everything I know about the dance world comes from, unsurprisingly, Showgirls. Burlesque. <laughs> By Coyote the way, o- the, one, the one degree of, of separation here, too, that we have a showgirls actress in, or will be showgirls actress. I, I believe. Think. Yeah, I can't remember when it came out. But anyway, so I, I don't, I don't have an interest in the reality of it. I really enjoy a world in which, like, magic might like I my whole basis of reality is like the way that movies have portrayed it and I know it's ridiculous yeah. and I I want you that. want more of that I want more of that I recently saw somebody showing clips from some dance competition show from the 90s mm-hmm. in which white kids were just suddenly <laughs> crushing it and there's the person is putting the moves in context for today. There's a part where Hayden Panettiere is just doing this for like a while, and people start chanting, "Go white girl, go white girl, go!" And so that's why I, it cannot be expressed enough how goofy and performative the '90s were, and why this mm-hmm. television is such a delight. Because mm-hmm. there are so many things that, like, if you were to ask Hayden, "Hey, honey, what if we played this scene like you really were in high school? Would you have done that?" And she's like, "Oh my god." I can't imagine a single girl doing this, and I think this pump move wouldn't have been enough. And they're like, well, don't worry. We got some movie magic, and we're going to lay down some music, and people will think it's great. And then if you look at it now without the music, it is completely insane. <laughs> I love the layers just for a dance thing, too. You know, that's that's what I'm saying. But yeah, with Rhonda, so you, you know, you have, so I have no... I have no problem believing what, whatever, this is how whatever, the dance world Whatever works. we saw, and, and, and we'll note again that like we're not hearing the music that was originally put to that dance, almost certainly. Yeah, you had a theory um, on what that song was. But yeah, well, later, later on, when Ron and Teresa come back around and they're actually having this like playful uh, uh, dance battle. But, but, but this was pop. This, this, this delusion was popped that the, whatever track that they substitute for in the budgetary downsizing of this show's footprint in the world uh it, it it really sounds like if anyone ever made the effort that they were doing like snap i've got the power oh right? yes but it was pointed out to me that no one makes that effort that that's that the, 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 the idea of someone making the effort to kind of match the music that they replace the good real music with to reflect it is like is is a is a is a phantasm of my making well i i i like to now think of it as like now it's this weird sort of strange pop art that we're experiencing where a robot algorithm maybe i don't know has selected what the song choice is going to be i like that i just you know i like to just take it as a you know just a a slice of like cultural history (laughs) 
I don't, there's not far to go with this, but there's this term, the palimpsest, the idea of like a, a document that's overwritten. Yes. And what is it? What, it's just just that that's what we're looking at. We're looking at something that is in a different form yeah. from how it was made to like be. Like a decoupage. Yes, yes. In a certain way. Things get layered on it and it's just so goofy and weird. The cl- Okay, again with Rhonda. Anytime, yes, Because yes, also she's yes. a dance instructor. And, you know... The or like a fitness. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, the let's get right into the fashion. We there was the, 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 the tassel get up. The tassel with get up different was arms. Great. I it was she, she just pulls everything off. It's, it, it's sort of like throw that on Allison. <laughs> I dare you. Allison and Jake, by contrast, you, you pointed out a gap couple. But Rhonda, I wanted to say I think that may or may have been the possibility that every single outfit had black mesh in in there was an enmeshment. There, there was, was an enmeshment. She even had the legging thing. This is like how much fun Rhonda's fashion is. Like, it is so not functional. She had these, like, fishnet ankle capri leggings that stopped here. They were just like, hey, my legs just need a little pattern on top of that them. That was the mesh on mesh get up the overall. And, 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 um, it put us in mind of the Catherine Bigelow film Strange Days, which actually was released into the theaters years after this aired. Mm-hmm. But this was like the story of L.A. in a notional 2000, only five years away, that was like like on the cusp of an apocalypse. And that was very much that sort of tattered Damalian sort of like mixy matchy actually weirdly puts me in mind of Alice uh, of uh, the Mancini original we saw before that was just a stitch job only only Rhonda's oh is God. good and looks good on her despite it sort of looking like she's like jump genre suddenly how dare you compare Rhonda's look in any way to you know what Jane Jane it is well it is Jane is it is, it is it, 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 I, I, it's it's harsh contrast it's a harsh contrast is what it is it's so funny you're so right because it really is where like they both had the same assignment. <laughs> Make it look like you're doing the best with what you got. <laughs> like Jane's was that crazy tent dress that she, Ooh, she the sister together. wife look. But yes, I love I love Rhonda's fashions and yes, then, yes, you know, yes. especially with the dancing and stuff. And yes. I just again, you know, just wish more was happening at the dance studio. It felt I did yeah, like all the dancing. Yeah, the show comes saw. alive. And, well, it's just the whole thing also of like, I'm sorry, you please go. Oh no 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 yeah, no, yeah the show the. the I would just say that the the dancing is the opportunity that we get to see a character actually do something they are really passionate about. Because a lot of them, you know, we're still not seeing... We're still... Billy kind of writes, but not quite. Jane kind of designs, but not quite. But we see more of Rhonda dancing than anybody else doing anything. And 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 good at it. Yes. Uh, this, uh, and I, I was going the same place. I'm glad you, you, this, we, were, we were synced up here. That it is like... I mean, we we can kind of just jump around with this because there's sort of like will she, won't she with the, the uh, is she going to audition to be part of the troupe that her friend Teresa is kind of stole her life, whatever. Um, yeah, and I think too, like again, it's very interesting that they are already presenting the idea that Rhonda could go away. Yep, yep. And so I beyond four, and yeah. I think that's a way in those early days to kind of maybe see how fans think yeah. about things and see how people react to this. So I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing because I was like, oh yeah, that would be that's such a bold it's like feedback suggestion. feedback loop sort of breadcrumbs that could be followed. Good chance, I don't know. Um, I, I, the through line that I like, and I'm I'm willing to go a different way with this, is just attitudes toward Rhonda being in the cardio funk business. <laughs> I mean, like, ostensibly, we could talk about it, like, Rhonda, uh, friend comes to town, complicated relationship, one audition, does audition, kills the audition, says, no thanks. That's all fine, but, like, in between, her friend, and they kind of, like, have, like, some nice frank talks about the fact that they're being frenemies to each other. Straight up. But anyways, um, uh... Uh, that 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 um, nobody respects her job. No one respects her job. That 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 it's like it, it's it's this like oh you're really wasting your talent. It's hysterical because this woman was actually quite ahead of her time. Because also think about like Jane Fonda revolutionized the home video game with her workout video. This is not that far removed from that time. So I again I just. Feel like the Rhonda character embodies this really specific, like a lot of what you do, what is a reality in LA, which is 
people are obsessed with working out. Those kind of people are obsessed with like their workouts and there's different styles of workouts that people go through through trends. And so again, I think you guys pointed out earlier, she's an influencer before there was there were influencers. So it's just Did you see what I just wrote down? Uh, is that what you wrote down? We're in the group. We're in the oh matrix here. Oh my gosh, we're in a yeah. group. Yes. You this is this I'm building on what you're saying if you don't mind. Not at all. You take Rhonda as she is in 1993, I think we're in. I should know that. That sounds Doesn't about matter. right. Or 92 or 93. It's, it's, it was 93. It's the fall of 93. Um, by now. Um, you, you, you transport that exact character to today. And she is a fitness slash lifestyle influencer of great success. More well known and happier with her life than she ever would be as a touring modern dancer. She, she, she She's like a woman out of time of our time. I was going to say she weirdly is timeless yeah. because her, I just, you know what guys, I'm having like an actual deep moment, but it really truly does show you that if you are an artist, it doesn't matter what the medium oh. is because her character is an artist. And meanwhile, you've got this advertising, per, like everyone else is trying to do this, like this job that only exists in some sort of middle management capacity or like trying to sell people stuff. But Rhonda just wants to dance and teach people dance. Which is physical labor that is below. Exactly. Exactly. And so she, I mean, even more so than um, Sandy, she's not waiting for anyone's approval or a gatekeeper. Like, honestly, I'm so sad that we never got to see Rhonda's workout studio. Like, of her having a little Yeah, boutique. that's the perfect, Ugh. that's the perfect, you know, that, yeah. I would totally yeah. have loved that. So, yeah. But, but uh, you know, on P-Valley, you know, you know, Jump Universe is Mercedes. Please. Anyways, yes, 100%. Right. We'll just leave that hanging out there. We'll just say those two words and see, Ronda see how much of a crossover we get to the MTM. But. Yeah, Rhonda walked so that Mercedes could run and, you know, all the other things she does. <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 there are some beats along the way about, like, like Rhonda had lied about the foot and stuff. I, but I don't know if... Is there, was there anything in between the question of how good a dancer she is that you found particularly, like... I mean, the that story, you want to talk about. No, the storyline... I mean, the storyline is pretty weak It's, it's not the like, strength of the... Well, it could, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no. Well, I was just going to say, it didn't... There wasn't a ton that, like... It felt very... It was a storyline that you could tell was just ending this episode anyway, so there was no... There was pretty much just a reset back to where we were. It didn't... I don't know. It wasn't super compelling to me. I agree. Unfortunately. And the, the most notable thing is, in terms of it being a story with any kind of arc... The change takes place off camera. We see an obsessed, <laughs> yes. kind of frantic Rhonda cramming for her final <laughs> of this audition. The cram duchess. <laughs> and we see the next morning and she's goddamn zen. And all of that that happened off camera. Yeah. But what we get to, the two things I want to maybe want to wrap Rhonda up with, with your permission. But Absolutely. Happy to open any gates that we that we, we may have bypassed. One one is Vanessa Williams is fucking great in the dance scene that oh, is the climax yeah. of her story in the episode. Yeah, it's so nice. It's, it's almost a like joy a... to see, and it, it goes back to the thing about like not seeing people in their passion and competence, except for these kinds of moments. Yeah, it was just it's just um, uh, just a nice, beautiful thing to watch. I mean, okay, this is like very tangential, but do it. I'm a big fan of Southside, and. It's on HBO Max, and it's a comedy set in Chicago. It's a predominantly black cast. I also found out later a lot of the people are related and friends, and so it's a very oh, much I like a family kind of affair. Yes. And so thinking about um, Rhonda and the dancing, like this is sort of an accidental moment where what they do a lot of is they'll have these little standalone moments of like either like a black joy. And this is like an accidental version of that to me, where you see these two actresses yeah. dancing together in this scene, and like yeah. that doesn't often happen on like no. a network show like that. So not in a predominantly white show at all. No, and so for me, it was funny where like they purposely do that in Southside, where every couple episodes there'll be like this little vignette where you're like, oh, this isn't like it's just like a moment, and yeah. so to me that felt like an accidental one of those when those two actresses right. were just dancing, and then when Vanessa was just like on this stage and like 
Yeah, it was just kind of like she called her family and said, hey, I'm going to be on, in this episode. I'm like highly featured is my where I go in my head. Beautiful. <laughs> so a joy to see Vanessa Williams, a break from seeing people that when you do see what they do, they're bad at it. And, and, and something I really loved about the resolution that is, again, very on Melrose Place is that we land on, like, Rhonda ha- has the opportunity in front of her for a callback that could lead to what is supposed to be part of the path to the apex of what was her, uh, you know, chosen profession at some point. And she says, no, I just kind of want to see if I could do it. And yeah. um, I'm cool. Peace. Like, I'm going to get back because cardio funk is what I like to do. And, like, that... I can't think of many... I mean, I know that there's kind of something that's kind of static about that, but given that the, there's this through line of people absolutely negging her for physical labor, for the kind of creativity she wants to do, for how she, her fucking livelihood, that she could land on, nope, like, I'm happy as I am. The, 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 I, I see the fork in the road, the road less traveled, cool. Like, that's, that touches my heart, I will yeah. say. I, I mean, she's... Thank you for she, listening. <laughs> oh, of course. She's the only one there who's there as an artist. <laughs> I mean, Sandy kind of is, but also she doesn't seem that passionate about acting. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just... It's, well, she's waiting for her thing to come along. And yeah. It, it very well might, but... Um, uh, yeah, and, 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 and Billy is a writer, I think. Like, I mean, Allison has straight up said now almost a couple times to his face that like writing is a bit of a front for him. Oh. It's a bit of, like, a thing he says he does. Well, I mean, you do reach a point where everyone's more involved in blackmail than whatever their profession is. Oh, yeah, yeah no, it is. Everyone's got a side hustle yeah. going. Oh, I, so, yeah, I, I, that, that, that was the big stuff. Uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm going through... Um, we, we already gotten some good fashion stuff. Rhonda's backstory kind of interesting to me, I guess, that, that, that is, is part of the same narrative that mm-hmm. we're talking about of how she should feel ashamed to be who she is and do what she does. Is that she's uh, her family moved from Detroit to San Jose, which is I'm, I'm led to believe a an affluent suburb, and that out of her generation, she's the only one who doesn't have an Ivy League education. So that idea of her being an apex modern dance, the best in town, best maybe in bigger stage, was like how she got out of the trap of not that that, that was the thing that allowed her to be okay in her family, and the fact that she didn't do it. Yeah, I meant she wasn't. Did you connect to that at all? Any any, any thoughts on that? Uh, I thought they were trying to do a parallel to Jake's thing, where it was both of them going back to like a thing from their past that, like, oh, I just wanted to know that I could do it, Mm -hmm. and I felt like they probably just, you know, it was just like trying to like parallel it. But um, you make that sound so intuitive that I, it's right there. Yeah, great. I've watched a lot of soaps. Yeah, but um, but homie. Homie, I gotta tell you. Yes. I, I think we examined this thing. I think we I think we got it. All right. <laughs> I think I don't know. Can we can we do some quotes? Do you think maybe we're, we're, Alana? We got a couple wrap up things. We just uh, we we didn't did we talk about the mantleberries enough? Uh, the return of the mantleberries on. I, on, on I in don't podcast? remember. It's up. It's up to. Uh, well, I don't Chris? know. Do you, is there? Oh, just the the the, the, the that um when Sandy has a vision of 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 Jake and Allison uh-huh. together. That vision includes an erotic strawberry. Oh, yes, yes, Another yes. example of the lack of creativity, because literally part of Sandy's scenario of it is that the pretext for her to get into Jake's apartment is to watch Nine and a Half Weeks on yes. VHS, mm-hmm. so she, which has the food thing with the sex. But like for us, we just went right back to those That's room so temperature strawberries <laughs> on the mantle that Billy used earlier in his seduction of the redheaded dental student. Yeah, there's no way so those like, things were chilled. So, I don't, like, I don't know if we've got a ton on that, but we wanted to hang a flag on the, the return of the mantleberries. We're, we're personally very passionate about mantleberries. Keep an eye out for mantleberries. Like, I feel like they will be a theme throughout. Um, and, and, and so I, I guess I'm just, I just want to ring the food bell and say also, like, loved... You could do Rhonda's career as a through line, and also Rhonda's diet as a through line, where she will not be shamed for her love of carbs. Oh, yes. She, in fact, one theory about her, the resolution to it all is that she kind of came around to the uh, no carbs, no way being her answer to dancing professionally. Oh, yeah. If like, you're going to she... tell me I can't have my pasta and my fries, mm-hmm. you can get fucked. I'm doing something different with my life. Well, she she is the independent thinker of the complex, honestly. Mm-hmm. She's the only one who's not working in someone else's business. <laughs> I mean, eventually. <laughs> um, uh, um, 
we, we do an extra of the week. We didn't find anyone who stood out this episode, but I would like to call the listeners' attention to uh, the building that is our extra of the week, which is the Tower Records and Video at 2830, oh, yes. if you're the kind of person who likes that. <laughs> um, just a, ni- a nice relic of a different era where like people went to stores and like bought objects and they came out and like led to a terrible amount of plastic waste. And I think it's, uh, you guys uh, determined it was on Ventura Boulevard, this, uh, this location. Ventura, for, Ventura standing in for Melrose is a theme, I think, on this show. Anyway, we, you know. Valley place. <laughs> yeah, we gotta, we gotta represent the valley. Um, we always talk about the worst thing Allison did. We've talked about how she went light this episode. Do you, do you have anything that you would stand out as, as the worst? I, I think that the worst thing she did... She, again, pretty mild this episode. I mean, really was helpful. I mean, the worst thing she did was just not, was brag about being a cram queen. And that's, I can't even say that was that bad, but it was so, it's just so great how even a, a flex from her goes wrong. Yeah, yeah she's, she's <laughs> stepping on her own dick there. Um, yes. Yeah, uh, Pretty Solid and I's uh, nomination for this was just the screechiness and the lecturing, breaking oh. up the party at the beginning. Like, oh, that was People really, were having a good time, yes. they're having a nice communal moment. All of a sudden, it has to be the Allison show, and no one wants any part of that. Yeah, she never had fun, ever. Like, she no. immediately was like, it's a problem. Stop talking about if I'm bluffing or not. <laughs> Let, let's do a thing that we want to make a regular thing when it's supposed to be a thing. And uh, I want to throw it to producer Alana right now, because something we want to keep track of here is people offering each other coffee, because of, you know, trust us, guys. It, it becomes wild. a whole thing. Uh, anything to say on that front, producer Alana? At 13.25, Allison offers Jake coffee while they're studying. And at 26.48, Billy <laughs> offers Allison coffee, I think when she stumbles in after the study session. And Michael is also wearing a shirt with coffee on it. <laughs> thank you, Producer Alana. I, 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 thank you for your service, keeping track of these important things. Yeah, you're right, Lisa. That just leaves us now. Thanks for... We want to wrap up. I think that was worthy. I um, feel like... I mean, a lot of... Uh, I feel like we may have given the storylines more thought than the writers. Oh, certain, well, almost certainly. So, quotations, Producer Alana? You, Producer or should we just Alana say... Is uh, say <laughs> quotation. <laughs> so, Lisa, gosh, you, you have gosh, the piece of paper it. with a line. Here. This is the most notable... Part of this episode. I'm going to tell you guys a little something about my friendship with Alana. Every now and then, the lady does something that I just want to say is perfect. And all that is on this piece of paper, and when I'm done with it, I will crumple it up and throw it behind me. (laughs) In tribute to Billy. (laughs) Much like my favorite writer that never was. And the quote is, in college... I was the cram queen. And you guys, I can't, I cannot, it's not going to get any better than that. Uh, no spoiler bonus this time. Thanks for listening, Melrose Maniacs. <laughs> we actually love you because otherwise this thing isn't really what we think it is and it's something else entirely. So thank you for listening. Thank you for any interactions. And thank you to the universe for bringing these wonderful people into my life. Same uh, here. Th- Lisa? Lisa? <laughs> Guys, thanks for having me. (laughs) You're right. This is magic.